to add something to what Alessia said. Um, uh, at the beginning, when we were thinking of uh, the, the research community in the board, the, the main question was uh, what we could uh, accept as a community. Okay, what is a community, basically? That's the, 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 the basic question. And um, uh, we started, um, in the beginning, we said, okay, we're not going to think about it. You know? So let's build something that allows us to uh, group uh, all these results of science uh, in different ways. Uh, we came up with possible ideas on how to let the admins include objects coming from this uh, information space to build in open air. Uh, but then, when we started thinking and thinking, uh, we realized that there was a slight difference between the communities that we were uh, contacting. Um, the immediate distinction that we uh, uh, felt was there is actually the intent. So what these communities are using these tools for. So there is a distinction, and this is the only one we found, maybe you can find another one, between um, a group of scientists who's a group because of research interests, so um, on a research gate. So I'm, I'm here and I want to know everything that can help me performing my research. And instead, a group of scientists or an organization, like a research infrastructure, for example, that wants to collect information about all the objects that have been produced thanks to the research infrastructure. This is more like a research impact analysis. So you don't want to have in this research community dashboard objects that are not uh, somehow <coughs> produced or involved or engaged with the services of the research infrastructure or what the scientists are doing. This is a big difference and we started with EGI in the beginning. EGI was actually our first use case and it fell, and fell exactly in this use case. So they wanted to collect all this information to show to the founders and to their scientists that their existence uh, is worth something. So look at how many publications, look at how many data sets, look at uh, how much software is being produced thanks to EGI. Okay? So this is a completely different thing. And in fact, in support of EGI, uh, we started uh, defining customizable mining uh, tools. So we were looking into the publications, the full text, the open access publications that we have, to find evidence of the fact that this science was performed uh, thanks to EGI services, or virtual organizations, or the disciplines, and so on. And this took us to a more generalized approach, where we can do the same thing for all these kind of research uh, uh, infrastructures. So today, if you look at the portal, if you go to beta, you can see that some research communities are identified as research communities, others as research initiatives. So there is a slight distinction between the two. Uh, in the research initiative one, so the research impact related uh, communities, you will find, for example, RDA. RDA is an initiative that's been founded by several projects that still exists. So it, it, it is an initiative whose record of publications uh, can be uh, collected across the years. And even in this case, you have a clear and neat distinction between uh, the research community and the research initiative. So there's no such a thing such as uh, research uh, of interest to RDA, it's too broad. But there is such a thing as what has been produced thanks to RDA. Okay, so uh, acknowledged in the uh, articles or in the, in the data set metadata or whatever. So you will find a distinction which is actually crucial, and maybe there are other and more fine-grained distinctions with that in the future, but this actually proved for us to be uh, very important. So, uh, the, the, I was asked to, to comment on the, the challenges that we found. There, there were several challenges that had to do with uh, what to show, what to, how to search, what to provide, how to make it useful, how to and so on, in this regard, the human user interface interaction and this is, of course, obvious, not obvious, because uh, those who had to develop it or uh, came up with solutions found it very hard, and I think they made an excellent job, in fact. Uh, but then there were some crucial key aspects. 
Uh, one of them, uh, in the context of open air, Connect, which is a project where we developed this, was to uh, actually identify what is an entity of interest in the scholarly communication domain. We had literature, we had data set, and then if you looked at it, that was the, the, the previous stage, that if you look at data set, data set could be so many things, and publications could be so many things. So we, we had to understand what would be of interest to communities across disciplinary uh, uh, talking as, a, as an entity. So the first uh, intuition was of course software. Software is everywhere. So software is uh, something that all researchers, despite the community of uh, pertinence, let's say, believe to be a resource for us. So we wanted it to be different from data. So something that is, uh, as a concept, different. Data is something you process, uh, software is something you execute. So conceptually we wanted to have this clear distinction. Those preparing data sets are, uh, have a different uh, intent with respect to those that are developing software and sharing software. When you share software, you often share some business logic and the way you wanted it to perform and you can do that. When you share data, you're actually sharing the results of some uh, uh, scientific uh, thinking. So observational or secondary data or whatever, but it's still something you want to process and give us an evidence. So this was the first distinction. Then we wanted to, if you look at the publications, the publications uh, coming from institutional repositories, again, they had a variety of things to say. So they range from the, the, the general concept of publication. If you also look at the vocabulary, standard vocabulary is used uh, out there, they range from images, multimedia, to software, to data sets, to well, whatever you can think of, from slides, all the literature typologies, but then also other things like uh, research objects. And so if you look at the repositories, it's crazy what you find. So we wanted to have a fine grain distinction there. So we came up with literature, which is uh, any product that is intended for reading in the end. So the intention is to not narrate something. I want to tell you a story with a slide, with a whatever. And the rest. So we came up with literature, literature, and software. The rest being what we called, not a very nice name, but we couldn't come up with anything better. And please <laughs> tell us, with other research products. Other research products is like mm, a store. <laughs> if you, you put everything that is not the rest uh, in respect of vocabularies that are very community specific. This was our choice. So each community can actually select the specific vocabulary of other products that they uh, manage every day. So and this is important because we want each community to recognize its own object when it's something specific. The same holds for software. Software, again, is something that can be classified in different ways with a jargon that is uh, that of the community. So this was really hard to, uh, to come up with a conclusion. It's very generic, the, the solution that we adopted, and it allows for custom solutions to the individual communities. Of course, from other products, you may one day uh, identify another critical mass of objects that are common to different uh, communities and therefore take it out. So we are exploring, for example, the virtual appliances, so virtual machines, which could be, again, another typology or another entity of scientific products uh, that deserves this uh, first-class citizen uh, stamp. Uh, the second issue was how to embed mining tools into the dashboards. So this wasn't part of the demo, but it's, it's there. So uh, before, our uh, developers and uh, data scientists had to contact every single community trying to come up with specific solutions for mining, right? So mining the publications to identify those publications that were part of the community. And this is this was some, some work, okay? So what we decided to do is to come up with user interfaces that allow to do that. So basically they abstract on uh, high-level concepts in mining, in text mining, and allow the end user with very minimal knowledge to customize these algorithms. And they can run them in a sandbox environment to test how successful they are. They can also upload their own uh, corpora if they want to, to run these tests. Once they're happy, they send the solution 
to the mining team over there. We spent body days there and checked if it's working. This actually was a, a lot of effort, also to understand which is the right balance between technicalities and uh, ideal concepts. Then the identifying the notion of community, I mentioned it before. Uh, propagation of community tasks, that's another interesting thing. You have a graph. Graph means these objects are connected. So there are several things you can do to propagate this notion of community. If my object belongs to a community, then possibly all the objects related to it belong to the community. To which extent? Can this be uh, planned by the research administrator? When is this true? Depending on the semantic of the community, can, is it just one step or two steps you can apply? Can you propagate the level of trust uh, of this uh, conclusion that we are making? Uh, so that users can visualize only a certain level of trust uh, entities, and so on. Uh, so we, we, we solve this problem by taking uh, unilateral decisions in the, what we are, we are propagating and adopting very conservative, conservative solutions. So for example, if you have a paper that belongs to a community that is supplemented by a data set, then the data set belongs to the community. This is something that we do. Okay? Uh, but we don't go beyond that. And this is still under discussion. Because one day what we hope to have is, uh, in the dashboard, a list of possible propagation effects that the administrator can select. To select how and to which extent they want to uh, color the graph with the, 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 the color of their own communities. Okay. So, this is for the future. For the future, what we are uh, I we need to introduce is some logic that allows us not only to specify uh, a data source among the ones that we have. So Alessia has shown before that you can select a content provider and say everything in this content provider belongs to my community. So when you collect from there, please add it. We'd like to have <coughs> criteria. So not, not, not all content from this data source will belong to mine, but only those matching certain conditions. And this is because in most of, most of the cases, um, the, the, the data source uh, attend can include uh, several things that not necessarily belong to the community, even if it's 90% of the objects, saying that everything belongs to my community is wrong. So we'd like to have ways of doing this. And we're thinking of what criteria we could apply. We have ideas, uh, but of course, uh, we're welcome to discuss them with you. Uh, metadata quality, this is one of the main issues uh, the whole scholarly communication is facing, in fact, so it's not our problem only. And uh, since users can claim, we would like to uh, have experts validate their claims. So these are just not the community, but we'd like to have a way to say uh, other three experts said this is fine. Or so a certain level of confidence uh, must be uh, recorded to make sense out of this. And we would also allow uh, the fixing of the metadata that we have. So it's not just about saying this object belongs to my community, but also fix the records. Um, we decide the fact with the content provider dashboard that we're not showing today that we can send a fix to the original sources because that's what the content provider dashboard can do. So this is, uh, is a win win scenario, but of course we need to link and we need thinking to make these things properly. And finally, community identity. This is another issue that is coming up, I don't know if you were present in the previous session, but it's coming up over and over again. So basically all infrastructures are facing this issue, which is that of identifying communities. They need to come up with a notion of community because they need to classify whatever the offer is in terms of these communities. So if you look at the EOS, if you look at the UDAT, if you look at the DGI, they all have their own internal notion of communities. And this is very important because if this is what we do. We would like to offer services to dedicated communities. What we cannot do today is to harmonize this logic. So uh, in the infra catalog, for example, I'd like to know for each service which are the communities involved, so that may be interested in that service. And I'd like to have my community naming or identification be aligned with that. So in, in the context of the EOS, this is extremely important. So we can actually map into each other uh, offer uh, very straight, straightforwardly. And this is something that we are uh, exploring also uh, in the